Welcome to IQ Central. In today's video, we will discuss the anatomy of conjunctiva. Conjunctiva is a mucous membrane covering the eye, which is pinkish, thin, translucent. It covers the anterior surface of the globe as well as the posterior surface of the eyelids. The conjunctiva extends from the mucocutaneous junction of the eyelids to the corneoscleral junction, which is known as the limbus. So here, uh, these are the cornea, sclera, and the upper eyelid. This is the mucocutaneous junction. The mucocutaneous junction is the zone of transition at the eyelid margin where the skin of the eyelid meets the conjunctiva. So actually, uh, it is at the mucocutaneous junction where the eyelid skin which has keratinized epithelium meets the conjunctiva which has non-keratinized epithelium. And starting from here, the conjunctiva finally ends at the limbus. So the conjunctiva can be broadly divided into three parts, the palpebral conjunctiva, the bulbar conjunctiva and the fornicial conjunctiva. The conjunctiva covering the posterior surface of the eyelid is known as the palpebral conjunctiva. The conjunctiva covering the surface of the globe, which is the scleral surface, is known as the bulbar conjunctiva. And the transition between these two, that is the transition between the palpebral and the bulbar conjunctiva, is known as the fornicial conjunctiva, or simply the fornix. The palpebral conjunctiva can be further subdivided into three parts, the marginal conjunctiva, the tarsal conjunctiva, and the orbital conjunctiva. Marginal conjunctiva starts at the mucocutaneous junction and it extends till 2 mm behind the lid margin where the sulcus subtarsalis or the subtarsal groove is located. Though this groove is hardly 1 mm deep, it is important to us because this is where many foreign bodies get lodged. Then comes the tarsal conjunctiva. It is the part of the palpebral conjunctiva which is very firmly adhered to the underlying tarsal plate. This green thing that you can see here is the tarsal plate. So it is very adhered on the tarsus of the upper eyelid and then also is quite adhered to the tarsus of the lower eyelid. Because the conjunctiva is so firmly adhered to the tarsal plate, any invasive lesion in this area appears clinically flat because there is no potential space for expansion. Also, this firm adherence is the reason why dissection of the tarsal conjunctiva is almost impossible because no tissue plane exists between the tarsus and the overlying tarsal conjunctiva. The third part of the palpebral conjunctiva is known as the orbital conjunctiva. Unlike the tarsal conjunctiva, it is relatively loosely attached to the underlying tissues. The palpebral conjunctiva further continues as conjunctiva of the fornix. The fornix in this region is thicker and also loosely attached to the underlying structures which allows for free movement of the globe. The fornix is present superiorly, inferiorly, temporally while medially it forms the plica semilunaris. Plica semilunaris is a vestige of nictating membrane which is also known as the third eyelid present in a few animals. Nasally, a true fornix does not exist except when the eye is in adduction. Another structure that is present medially is the caruncle. It represents a blend of conjunctiva and skin. It measures 4 to 5 mm horizontally and 3 to 4 mm vertically, and it is present at the most medial part of the interpalpebral fissure. The caruncle contains pilosebaceous glands, accessory lacrimal gland tissue, fibro fatty tissue, etc. Fornicial conjunctiva continues on the surface of the globe as bulbar conjunctiva. It is also loosely attached except for the 3 mm zone around the limbus, where it is known as the limbal conjunctiva. It is also tightly adherent at the insertion of recti muscles. So the bulbar conjunctiva has two parts, the limbal conjunctiva which is present 3 mm around the limbus. It fuses with the corneal epithelium at the limbus. The rest of the bulbar conjunctiva is known as the scleral conjunctiva. Conjunctiva contains various mucin secreting glands as well as accessory lacrimal glands. So between the eyelid margin and the subtarsal groove lie multiple infoldings of the conjunctival epithelium which are known as pseudo crypts of Henle, they secrete mucin. Then there are also present mucin secreting glands of mans which are located in the limbal conjunctiva arranged in a ring around the cornea. Mucin is also secreted by the goblet cells of conjunctival epithelium and we'll talk about them in detail later. The accessory lacrimal glands present in the conjunctiva are glands of Krauss which are present in the fornices and the glands of Wolfring which are present at the upper border of superior tarsus and lower border of inferior tarsus. Moving on embryological development, the conjunctiva is derived from the surface ectoderm. It is very important to understand the histology of conjunctiva in order to appreciate its various functions. So histologically, the conjunctiva can be divided into two parts, the conjunctival epithelium and the substantia propria, which is also known as the stroma. We'll start with the epithelium. The epithelium is non-keratinized stratified epithelium, but the number of layers present as well as the types of cells present in each area, it differs greatly from the eyelid margin to the limbus. So at the mucocutaneous junction, the keratinized stratified squamous epithelium of the eyelid skin changes to non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium of marginal conjunctiva. The epithelium here is 5 layers thick. 
the superficial layer has squamous cells the middle layer has polyhedral cells and the deepest layer has cylindrical cells at the subtarsal sulcus the epithelium transforms to stratified cuboidal epithelium containing only two layers superficial layer of cylindrical cells and deep layer of cuboidal cells so this covers the tarsal and the orbital part of palpebral conjunctiva the epithelium increases to three layers in fornicial and bulbar conjunctiva top layer is cylindrical cells middle layer is polyhedral cells and the deepest layer is cuboidal cells the thickest epithelium is found in the limbus where it consists of as many as 10 layers of stratified squamous epithelium with the superficial layer made up of squamous cells middle layer of polygonal cells and basal layer of cubical cells so as i told you it is a non keratinized epithelium throughout keratinization of conjunctival epithelium is always pathological it may occur in diseases like vitamin a deficiency keratoconjunctivitis sicca steven johnson syndrome etc The various different non-epithelial cells found in the conjunctival epithelium are goblet cells, melanocytes, Langerhans cells, conjunctival associated lymphoid tissue and mucosal associated lymphoid tissue. We'll talk about conjunctival goblet cells in detail. Goblet cells make up about 5 to 10% of conjunctival basal epithelial cells. They are the source of mucins that form the innermost layer of the tear film. So tear film has three layers from outside to inside it has a lipid layer then the aqueous layer and the innermost mucin layer. This mucin layer is secreted by the conjunctival goblet cells thus the goblet cells help in maintaining the wettability of the ocular surface they reduce friction of the eyeball and protect it from harmful substances and pathogens the greatest density of goblet cells is in the nasal region of the conjunctiva they are less dense in superior and inferior bulbar regions and almost absent at the temporal limbus the mucin molecule secreted by them is muc5ac The second layer of conjunctiva is known as substantia propria or stroma. It consists of two layers, the superficial adenoid layer and a deeper fibrous layer. Adenoid layer is not present at birth. It begins to form at 8 to 12 weeks of age. It is a thick layer of lymphocytes and it gets stimulated by viral or chlamydial infections of the conjunctiva to form lymphoid follicles. That is why before 3 months of age, lymphoid follicles are not seen in cases of conjunctivitis. These lymphocytes are predominantly helper T cells. Few scattered B cells and macrophages are also present. The fibrous layer of conjunctiva has collagen, elastic fibers, vessels, lymphatics and nerves. It is thicker than the adenoid layer except in the tarsal conjunctiva where it is very thin. Coming to the vascular supply of conjunctiva, palpebral conjunctiva and eyelids, they get their blood supply from the terminal branches of ophthalmic artery, the dorsal, nasal, frontal, supraorbital and lacrimal arteries. Supplemental blood supply is by branches of the facial artery. Bulbar conjunctiva gets its blood supply from branches of anterior ciliary arteries. Lymphatic drainage of the conjunctiva is to the submandibular nodes medially and to the preauricular nodes laterally. The nerve supply of conjunctiva is derived from branches of ophthalmic nerve which is a branch of the trigeminal nerve. So in the end we'll summarize the important functions of the conjunctiva. Number 1 it protects the soft tissues of globe and eyelids. It contributes to the mucus and aqueous layers of the tear film because it contains mucin secreting glands and accessory lacrimal glands. It allows unrestricted independent movement of the globe. It plays a major role in ocular surface immunology as it contains lymphoid tissue. Our next uh, video in this series of anatomy lectures will be on the anatomy of limbus. Please like and share this video with your friends if you found it useful and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more such videos. Thank you very much.